All right. Okay, good win Saturday, hard-fought game uh, against a good football team. Was really proud of the way we overcame sort of the adversities of the game, so to speak. Uh, offense, you know, turned it over three times in the first half, and defense responded every time. And then the offense throughout the game responded to Maryland scores. Like to finish the game a hair better. Thought we really could have uh, made a statement at the end, but it's a good win. Uh, Northwestern, a very tough uh, challenge. This will be the best defensive team we've played. Uh, really extremely well coached uh, in the right places. Uh, they know what they're doing. Uh, that make you earn your points. Uh, they're not going to lose the game. You're going to have to win it. Offensively, uh, struggling a little bit uh, to get their rhythm going. Uh, quarterback position's been a little inconsistent for them, uh, but have some dynamic guys. Uh, Kickoff return guy, 96 yarder against Washington, play some running back too. So, uh, looking forward to having a good week uh, in preparation for this, you know, next game. You talk Saturday and then again today about overcoming adversity. In your experience, how does that manifest itself when a team maybe does have to grapple with some of those difficult moments for the first time and see itself come through? Defense pulls the offense up. Yeah. Offense pulls the defense up. When you come out the other side of it, right. what does it look like? How do you how do you see it? Well, to me, like that's part of coaching is you're you're, you're sending those messages in spring football practice, fall training camp. How are we going to respond when this happens? That happens. It's the way we play the game: never too high, never too low. So you know you you're not emotional about the circumstances of the football game. You're focused, you know, on uh, the here and now and what's your job and keeping your poise and composure. And, uh, you, you know, when you get 11 guys doing their job consistently, uh, you know, that can happen. Going into the season, you kind of talked about some of the things that you thought would be strengths, wide receiver, running back, defensive line. But is there anything that you've kind of seen through the first five weeks that maybe has surprised you in terms of uh, a position or even a player, just that it's that something that maybe you didn't anticipate before the season? I mean, I, I don't really look at it like that. Um, to me, all the areas have to improve because you do get better or you get worse. Um, you know, I think we've uh, played um, fairly consistently for the most part uh, in, in all three phases, but uh, definite improvements that can be made. And, uh, you know, um, with every success comes belief. And uh, this is a team that's uh, a little bit on a mission. And uh, Northwestern's the next one up. <clears throat> Kurt, in talking to the players over the course of the season, you know, it's pretty clear that they embody the message that you want them to embody in terms of buy-in and in terms of right. what your kind of vision for the program mm -hmm. is. When you're recruiting players, and when you and once you have them too, how do you kind of build that, that, how do you kind of see that, that, that kind of vision of buy-in? How do you try to recruit mm -hmm. that? How do you try to build it once they actually Well, it's all about here? the people, you know, you hire and recruit. So uh, in recruiting, you know, talent's important, but character is equally important. So, you know, um, and I sit down with all of them in my office and um, because you want people that uh, can kind of buy into the team concept, understand commitment and discipline, hard work that are moldable, and uh, not necessarily totally self-centered type people. Um, so it's all about people. Jack and Zach Keith. Yeah, Kurt, uh, the, the way the defensive line was able to get some pressure and I guess also the offensive line um, in the run game and protection, was that sort of reassuring for you to see from both lines against a Big Ten opponent like compared to the first like three non-conference games? Well, um, I thought our defensive line needed to have a big win in this game because it's one of our strengths going up against one of their weaknesses. And I felt like uh, they did. We put really good pressure on the quarterback. And, uh, you know, I was glad to see that. So, uh, and the offensive line, I think, it, you know, has done a nice job uh, game in, game out. and. I think certainly you could see early in the second half the push we were getting in the run game. 
After Curtis's early interceptions on Saturday, you said that he responded exactly how you thought he would. What did he show on his Ohio tape that made you understand and realize that he would respond that way? Well, I think it was just more being around him since he's been with us in the spring. Like, uh, he doesn't really seem to get phased by a whole lot of stuff, and uh, he's on to the next play. So, uh, you know, those turnovers were uh, avoidable. Sometimes you got to cut your losses. Uh, but, you know, I never had any kind, nor did anybody on the staff uh, have any kind of doubt that he wouldn't bounce right back, which he did. Yeah, Omar Cooper has made a few big plays, uh, you know, obviously on Saturday. Just what's, you know, obviously the wide receiver room is pretty crowded. What's mm -hmm. allowing him to kind of stand out so much in that room? Well, you know, his big thing is day in, day out consistency because he has talent. Uh, I really like him a lot. And, he, uh, you know, he's an explosive player with good ball skills that, that has just improved from spring to fall camp throughout the season. And, uh, that's why, you know, we're putting him in position to make the plays. And uh, he made a couple big ones on Saturday, uh, a couple nice throws, contested catches. So, um, you know, like him a lot. Danny, on your left, and Ken, yeah, your resume is what it is as far as winning. Is there a shared trait you kind of look back on and, and say, like, all of the teams that we've had that are good have this trait? Well, yeah, I mean, you're, you got a blueprint and a plan, and you're – creating a culture and an identity and a team mindset. We want to be a tough, physical, relentless competitor. Uh, you know, that plays really hard, one play at a time, smart, disciplined, and poised. Never too high, never too low. And that's how all the teams have played, and that's how we're trying to get this team to play. Ken up top from Joe. Your offensive and defensive lines on both sides of the ball have done a really good job of controlling that line of scrimmage. It's been a big part of your success. How do you get them to continue to keep that up and build on that as, as the weeks move on? I mean, it's all to me the same. Uh, you know, today's got to be a great day of preparation, mental and uh, physical preparation for the opponent coming up. And, uh, you know, you stack good days. And uh, hope you can keep your people healthy. Right, because that's a big part of it too. We're deeper in some areas than others, and um, you keep improving. Doing the right thing is. You've mentioned the margin of error once the season starts. What part of the this team have you seen from fall camp uh, that's taken the biggest strides in uh, shortening that margin? I think just in our uh, our mindset and how we approach the game, and some of the questions were directed to overcoming adversity or the highs and lows of the game. Is this team has sort of absorbed that message and tried to apply it where they're not affected, overly affected by success or failure. With Miles Price, uh, how did he get on your radar initially? And then what have you kind of thought of his season you know, from special teams and, and receiver? Yeah, he's a really good player. Uh, he's a great teammate too, has a lot of positive energy. Uh, Derek Goings knew him from his time at Texas Tech. Derek had been at Texas Tech. And, uh, you know, we liked what we saw on his tape and in our conversations with him. I think he's done a tremendous job. When you got the job, did you kind of seek out those connections for transfers? Or did those guys, like, offer them or, like, say, this, this is a guy that might be stand out? Well, I mean, you know, the guys are in the portal. You evaluate the tape. And I think Derek came to me. He's like, this is a guy we all look at real hard. He's a great teammate. He's great for the locker room, which he is. Yeah. Hi, Coach. Um, you know, we talked about the offensive line a few, number of times. I was just wondering, specifically with uh, Coach Bostad's approach, what do you, you kind of like about his approach uh, developing that group and how have they kind of, you know, um, owned his teaching uh, the last few weeks? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Bob's a really good football coach. He, he's a fundamentalist. Uh, he's tough. He's hard-nosed. His guys embody that kind of a blue-collar work ethic. And, uh, you know, he, he, he makes them tough and physical, and he coaches them that way every single day. So, uh, and I see it show up on Saturday. Kurt, on Saturday, you're, you're, you guys had three turnovers in the first half, which was uh, unaccustomary for this team, but the defense responded time after time. What does that do for this defense going forward, and what does that show you going forward for them? Well, uh, yeah, I was really pleased to see that. Right? It, it gave us an opportunity to be successful. And, uh, 
am, I'm not surprised by because I think we have a good defense, a very capable defense. So I wish we didn't turn the ball over like we did. But uh, sometimes, uh, you know, you're going to have things throughout the season. Uh, and it was great to see them do that. And I, again, I just think every win builds team confidence. Yeah, um, with Elijah, obviously you had him last year. I think he had seven for 128 um, mm -hmm. last week. Just what, what makes him who he is, in your opinion? He loves ball. He's very competitive. He's got good talent. He's got great ball skills. He's really good at contested catches. And, he, you know, he's always up. You know, he's got a, a great personality and, you know, he's eager to practice, eager to play and, and loves ball. Were you aware of the Waffle House name that he has? Uh, I heard uh, that he had created that name. <laughs> I can't attest to the validity of Waffle House always being open. <laughs> but even when he's not, he'll find a way to come down with the ball. Coach, my name's Rich. I'm with Channel 13, NBC, out of Indianapolis. I'm here because this team is now attracting attention. I did sports for 20-some years, but now I'm a news reporter. And this is becoming a news story, what this team is doing. Sorry for the long question. I don't like long questions. I'll get to my point. Are you surprised at all by what this team has done? What should be your team's reaction to their success so far? What should be the fan and student reaction to what you guys have accomplished so far? I'm not surprised. I, I pretty much told everybody when I got hired that this is what was possible, and I felt uh, strongly about that after the, we brought the 22 transfers in in December and added a few more at the end of spring ball so, and saw the cultures come together the way it did. And, but we had to put it on the field, so I knew it was possible. Uh, because, you know, I'd kind of been a part of something like this before. And, um, and I think uh, people are getting excited, which is a natural part of that process, too. When you win, right, uh, the stadium fills up more, it gets louder. And, uh, you know, the team understands uh, how fragile success can be and how important preparation is on a daily basis, and um, I'm confident we'll handle today and this week the way we need to. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.